Hi, in this tips and tricks video we're going to quickly take a look at uh, substance materials and their use in view. On the screen at the moment you can see I just have a flat plane loaded um, and I've got the interactive path tracer set up so we can see how the material behaves as we adjust it. So I'm just going to go ahead and load a material and I'm going to use a material which uh, I have uh, downloaded from the substance share area. You'll see a link at the bottom of the screen showing you where that area is located. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the um, substance material. So you can see straight away in the interactive uh, uh, path tracer that it's displaying the uh, displacement quite nicely associated with this material. So let's just quickly go ahead and look at some of the parameters which are available to us. Once we load a substance material, we have all the normal tabs. You'll see it imports as a PBR material. And we can go ahead and look at some of the parameters which ship with this material. First and foremost, uh, working from the left, we get a, a range of options of the different maps that we can see which are being used. So we have the normal map, the roughness map, base color, etc. Be aware that a lot of substance materials, because they're made by individuals, um, they all have slightly different ways of doing things, so some things may come in with uh, different names. Main composition down here, we can look at the output size. At the moment, it's uh, just a 256 square image-based uh, texture. We've got a range of different sizes we can work with. It's always good to work with a low resolution until we uh, know exactly what we're going to work with and then uh, uh, change it up. But for this exercise, I'm going to change it to 1024 straight away. This can take a few seconds to load or not, as the case may be. Let's just quickly look at some of the parameters. So, for instance, um, we have all sorts of pebbles which should appear within here. We have leaves. We have sand, not quite sure what that tick does. Okay, so we can see some of the sand appearing through here. Um, we can have leaves on or off. You can see leaves scattered throughout. If I'm, I'm thinking of this in terms of it being a beach material, so I don't particularly want leaves on there. We also have various options relating to um, the normals i.e. the bumpiness of the of the map uh, and again in some other on some other substance materials you may have the option to switch between DirectX and OpenGL um, normals which we'll look at in the next material uh, because there's one specific area I really want to have a look at. You can of course if you so desire increase the amount of displacement on any of these substance materials we can increase or decrease as we see fit i'll just do a quick final quality render so we can see what we're getting in the normal view render engine it doesn't take too long to render sometimes uh, certainly in heavy displacement uh, there can be a bit of a lag but this material reacts quite quickly so you can see we get a nice quality of, of rock work because we've upped uh, the resolution. I'll just do a quick render when this completes in 256 so we can do a comparison between the two. Okay, so that's not a bad looking material, especially considering it's, it's uh, freely shared from substance. Let's just switch back our parameters back to 256. Okay and let's do a render then we'll do a, a quick comparison so you can appreciate the difference between resolutions as it comes in we can already see that uh, we've lost quite a lot of detail you can see that this is quite pixelated but as I say we'll just do a quick comparison so the uh, the blue is the 1024 the orange as it were is the uh, 256 so you can see what a massive difference that makes in terms of quality of, of material in terms of eroded details in these rocks and the pebbles which are strewn about so you can see the value of uh, being able to increase and decrease resolution 
One other thing we need to be aware of when we're dealing with substance materials is uh, the difficulties that can be experienced by importing uh, geometry, uh, OBJs, uh, and particularly 3DS. On the screen at the moment, you can see this, uh, this bust, this sculpture. Um, this is an imported 3DS file. And I'll go ahead and show you what the issue is. So I'm just going to load a substance material. Okay. Now the screen will refresh in a second. And you can see that whilst our material, if we look at the front end, is supposed to look like moss over rocks, we just have a, a flat, um, horrible shade of brown. Now this is because this particular imported geometry has a problem and that is that it has no UVs, it has no uh, coordinates for the, the texture to be applied. So in this particular instance what we need to do is we need to go into the function editor and just have a look at the way substance is, is connected up. So I'll just move these out of the way so we can see what we're doing. So you can see that view has gone ahead and it's connected all of the nodes where they need to be connected. But in particular, uh, a new input node has been created, which deals with the UV coordinates or the coordinates of the texture. So if we look down at the settings for these UV coordinates, you'll see that the mapping mode by default comes in as automatic. Now, as I say, because this particular mesh and some meshes you will come across, um, have been textured badly or not textured at all, we just need to check uh, the kind of mapping mode that we're going to use. And I find that for, for something like this, faces is a good mapping mode to use. So I'll just refresh the um, interactive path tracer. And there we go. So you can see now the texture has been applied the way we would expect it to be applied. I'll just do a quick render so we can see what we are getting so there's the render completed and you can see the the mossy rock effect it's a little bit different because we're using the view render engine not the path tracer render engine but as you can see we still have that flexibility to change the scale of the uh, material to make it look a little bit uh, like the statues larger than it actually is and we'll go ahead and render that. So that's the render complete. And we can see that if we do a comparison between the previous and what we have now, the distribution of the materials has changed quite significantly. So remember, if you import geometry and apply a substance material and it doesn't look right compared to the actual material preview that we see in the substance settings within the material editor, we need to just quickly visit the graph and we need to just look at these UV coordinates which are associated with the material. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to check us out on social media and leave us any feedback or requests for future videos. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.